Don't make this a bad day for me. Hey, oh. Hey. Do you want me to drive? Let me drive. Let me drive. Pull over. Pull over. Pull over. Pull over. Which way am I? Pull over. Hello and welcome to Lord Lucan. It's time to grab your inmate for a quick dosey do as we chate our way into another episode of Life After Lockup. On today's show, Zlrrr and Troy commit misdemeanor larceny. It ain't supposed to be about us and our anniversary. Legs Akimbo demonstrates there's a fine line between denial and stupidity. I don't think he's coming off drugs because I think he would be throwing up. <coughs> Coraline, aka Bianca, reads her reviews. See, you literally just don't care. Hallelujah, Henry is up for a toss in the kitchen. I gotta go make it sir. Yes. Legs Akimbo knocks out a few bars on her son. <laughs> Vanilla Tenny is totally sure she wants another baby. I do want another baby. I do. Uh, well, I mean, yes, I do want another baby. And Kush Karen has got her glasses stuck in her hair. I'm leaving to that S7. All this and more right here on today's show. Are you kidding me? Hola, que pasa? And ecky thump to you. Big love to those who've subscribed, you beautiful people. And a delightful monstero bleaker to the lords and ladies of the Lucan Manor. First today, we're off to Scottsville to see something skinny with a big round head. That's right, it's a Coraline and One and Done Daniel segment. Yeah, 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 joyous. But, good news everyone, today we get to see our strobby little strumpet storm off in a sassy's dress. He pisses me off, I just don't. Like, it's really just irritating. I'm being serious, I just don't. And One and Dan has the natural reaction to such drama. Yeah, good job. No, actually, it's not sad, is it? Let's give her a much more fitting exit track. That's better. So, what's got her granny knickers stuck in a turkey twizzler? Well, she's very annoyed because one and Dan won't let Coraline finger the ring he's been harboring. And because Gator's missus got one, she wants one too. She's admitted to this. She thinks if I give her the ring, we put the ring on, all these bad feelings are gonna just disappear. Mostly because marriage is clearly a fix-all, you know. Getting married as a solution to a turbulent relationship is always a great idea. I've heard relationships based on intense experiences never work. Okay. We'll have to base it on sex then. So the boys elect poor Celeste, Gator's good lady, to be the one to take a bit of fallout for the team. Go here, babe. Should I go? Yeah, girl. Please. So we can go play darts again? <laughs> yeah, he better be buying a dinner for that. Although I'm not getting this chivalrous gentleman vibe from him. Plus he talks in the third person, which is a sign of narcissism. Ooh, I feel for Celeste. Not only does she not know Coraline from a damp mop in the corner, and those two things are largely indistinguishable from each other on a good day. He should be coming out here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why he's not. Well, I think that's worth more than dinner. I think she deserves lunch, dinner, a new outfit, and a trip to Cumberland for that little indiscretion. I refuse to do that. No, I've got an idea what might be stopping him. Apart from the fact his nobility and courtesy could be compared to his bedside manner, short, shriveled, and lifeless. Yo, Fletcher, how's it going? Short, shriveled, and always to the left. But I think it's more about that unappealing teenager that's a bit off-putting. She's not coming back, so. <laughs> But don't worry, advice fans, Gator has got some that I think we can all relate to. Dude, you need to f run, dude. So, because he doesn't do chasing after annoying people, he chases after his annoying person to piss her off a bit more by asking her if he'd like to say goodbye to his friends and not worshipping her fatigue correctly. What a bastard. Once you burn me out like this, I get f irritated, and that's what it is. And that's how <laughs> Back at the passion pad, and one and Dan has the undesirable task of trying to make Coraline happier. Woof, blimey, that's a thankless task in itself. You don't want that right now. Yeah. Yeah, you know that. But I do, and that's something important to me. See how the fact it means something to her means it overrules everybody else's feelings. Her feelings are the most important, you know, you know she's, uh, she's having them. It's like trying to polish your proverbials. I'm holding on to a ball of wet dung and I have a hard time imagining that it's going to be shiny when I'm all done. A lot of my family members, they cut me off. They don't want to speak to me because of my choices to be with you and to 
be dramatic, petulant, entitled, lazy moo, declare CA and DA, but have your case dismissed before you can give evidence, attempt to alienate and demonize your father because he couldn't be both successful and a doting father at the same time, then try to divide the family, most of whom don't believe you. Speaking of which, is the man himself, Joe DiPaolo. Ever wonder what the future holds for those looks of hers? Mmm, mmm, that's delightful. In body language circles, they talk about how the urge to do a big swallow is an indication that your body is trying to clear that massive whopper from your throat. And here is Coraline to give us a little demonstration. Leave everything behind to have a life with you. See that? More throat action than Foxy Brown. Ooh, ah, yeah, that's an outdated reference. Okay, uh, let's try that again. More throat than real Hunter. Yeah, uh, that might be a bit obscure. Okay, uh, more throat than Tammy Owen, Trilisa Contestablos, Isaiah Richard, Renee Strider. She's Minnie Me's wife, by the way. Uh, that's a big mouth for such a small task. Anyway, uh, yeah, Coraline. It just makes me look crazy. It doesn't make you look crazy. You make you look crazy, you silly sausage. Ah, will they get their act together? Will Cora get the hardware she's been after? We'll find out in a bit. Off now to Syracuse, and we've got an appointment with Zerubba and Troy. And oh no, another minor crisis has arisen. A man from the blood-sucking department has popped over to give the car a new earring. All for the pleasure of giving him $550. Bargain. But don't you worry, business fans, the company is coming to the rescue. I believe a couple thousand dollars in the account for emergency purposes. Cool, yeah, yeah. The emergency money that the uh, charity has, or rather, the emergency money the charity couldn't pay its rent because it was short of money, has. Is, uh, is, that, is that the money you mean? You know, and this is obviously an emergency, so... Hang on a second. That's not obviously an emergency. No, no. This is what they call obviously embezzlement and petty larceny. The embezzlement, when a person intentionally uses funds for a different purpose than they were intended to be used. But don't worry, crime fans. With an amount of only $550 taken, New York law says it's only petty larceny, obtaining property by false pretenses or false promises. And because it's less than a felony threshold of $1,000, it's still just a misdemeanor. Interestingly, one of the key takeaways of embezzlement is that embezzlers might collaborate with a partner who is listed as a consultant or contractor who issues invoices and receives payment, yet never actually performing the duties they were charging for. Hmm, that doesn't sound at all familiar. Also this part, others include destroying company records or pocketing company cash. Yeah, that's a familiar smell to that one too. What is also interesting is that if you were to prove that Troy and Zerubbabel embezzled another $450, you know, like paying Troy or hiring office space because you've got a spot on a TV show and you want to look cool, then, you know, that could be considered a tantamount to grand larceny of a 501c3 charity and they'd be looking at a sentence of up to four years. Fun times. Also, did you know that 0.36% of Americans are lawyers? That's about 1.3 million, you know, or Maine. Which means, according to probability, around 4,500 lawyers would have seen this happen. Yeah, it'll all be fine. But she never mentions the impact of the local community. It's never about how losing the company will mean the community suffers. It's all about them losing money, paying rent, etc. You started a bloody non-profit. Those are there to support people. You know, not bloody profit. We need 50 kids to sign up for Project Kill. And if we don't, we could lose our business. These two clearly have no idea what to do. No idea how to market themselves or how to go about it recruitment. Did they even Google these outreach programs? This is Tommy the Clown. He reaches people by going out and, you know, reaching people. With dance and like big energy. We even sent renowned journalist Professor Pilkington over to have his outreach. <laughs> Now, what's the difference between Tommy and these two? Well, you know, the makeup's kind of similar. It's passion for the project. Zerubbabel and Troy have absolutely zero concerns for the people she supposedly supports. Never once mentioned them. And there's no way you can just do a community drive and get 50 random kids to sign up. What, with a brochure? Mmm, kids love themselves a good brochure. She needs to get the kids to go to the community first. And aside from piggybacking on her Uncle Dad's church do, her amazing service to the community is, uh, uh, brochures. If only there was a person whose job it was to reach the kids. You know, talk to them on a street level and make meaningful connections. And, uh, you know, isn't this what Troy is getting paid to do? Engage the community? <coughs> and as soon as they arrive... Alright, I'll be back. 
they leave again because of didn't bother picking up the brochures ahead of time. The one thing she actually had to do. But is on full bitch mode and is now blaming everybody else for her problems as usual. This woman is unhinged. The slightest thing is she's pressing that big old red button and leaves nothing but scorched earth around her. They supposed to be about us and our anniversary. Oh yeah, and it's uh, totally fine that she treats Troy like crap. Sure, I can see why she chose him now. He's agreeable, obedient, delusional, and a bit stupid. Perfect for taking out your frustrations, because it won't fight back or point out your hypocrisy. Delightful. And while we give Dr. Dave a shout to see if he's got any more of those elephant tranquilizers left, we go for a commercial break. Thank you for watching so far, and I hope you stick around for the Mills as is is. More and a touch of Coraline. No thanks. Kindly watch as much of the adverts as you can, as it helps my channel. So skip the skip to support the channel, and I'll see you in a mo. Welcome back, and thanks for staying tuned. First up in the second down is a glance at the Mills. And Millsy gives an example of how he has no balls. I immediately jumped up and said, we're not saying Yeah, that's the spirit. Don't grow a pair and step up like you were banging on about last week. But she doesn't understand that if something was to happen to her, I want to be the one to step up. Yeah, that's just, you know, rhetoric and stuff. All in the land of worst case scenario. He's not expecting to have to actually step up. Therefore, he can be as blase as he likes, because it'll never happen. And you can promise whatever you like when you're in the Never Never Land. Yeah, I'll buy him a unicorn and move to Disneyland. But what would the actual reality look like? Hi, Kylie. Can you take care of this legion of children while I sketch my new trainers and pretend to be a rapper, even though I'm like 50 or something? Or maybe he's just going to... Leave it in God's hands. Anyway, rather than Millsy, that Juju telling their parents ahead of time so they're able to process the information... I'm gonna be having another baby the day after Maddie's birthday party. They bravely decide to hide it as long as possible and then wonder why everybody gets pissed off about it. <laughs> People these days. On went to the land of flashback Rachel and nice but dim Louie. And these two are vacuous and boring as usual. It's quite funny though that flashback Rachel looks more like flashback Rachel when she was flashback Melissa than flashback Rachel did. Oh, and they meet a shopkeeper who is more bitter than cheap vodka and has the shoulder backs that a linebacker would be proud of. Whoa, look at those. A decent updraft and she'll be flying back to Russia. Meanwhile, over in Eden, Slightly ironic. We're with Legs Akimbo, and you are not the Joey. And Detective Akimbo is smelling something fishy. And she doesn't mean the contents of cooking with Jack's party salad. It's just not himself right now. Hmm, well, let's examine the evidence, Watson. Withdrawing large amounts of cash, sneakily texting people, unexplained disappearances, looking like you've seen more crack than a builder's convention? Nope, no idea what that could be. But as we book ourselves into urgent care, we get a dose of vanilla tenny and rob. And this week, at the bowling alley, Rob is fantasizing about one day being able to party at the bowling alley with his mum too. I would love to maybe one day have this type of setting with my mama. See, the child who is 10 going on 35 is mystified by the statement. You a grown ass man, fool. Talk about going bowling with your mama. Aside from that, it was uh, pretty vanilla, really. There's always. It's right there, I love you and I support it your is. decision, but it's yeah. still scary. It is very scary. And we get distracted by something that looks like an oasis from a distance, but it's actually prickly and arid. It's Coraline and one and done Daniel. Ooh, and before we go on, someone's nicked my grandma's old pillowcase off her washing line. She's obviously devastated, so if you see it about, please do let me know. All right, I love you. You scoundrel. Now to make yourself look more unappealing. It's also because she has some conventional prettiness. She's not the smoky-eyed Cleopatra that is Tenny, sure. But she's also not, you know, Joey. Coraline is just giving us a zero in the panzer meter like Kira Knightley or that Rachel Ziegler. Now my brain knows they're supposed to be pretty curves and stuff, and if you do some math, it's probably really good for some sort of, I don't know, ratio or something. And sure, they've got some lovely bits and bobs, but there's nothing registering on the Richter. I wonder if the same for women in the Tate Brothers. Anyway, I'm sure I'm supposed to be lusting after this woman, who's wearing nothing but a slightly too tight, slightly loose, shimmery thing, showing everyone the penis that she's smuggling. Then I couldn't care less. Back now to Zrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
now for another break, but don't miss the last part. When we get back to the Mills' and Joey gets tested. So skip the skip, support the channel, and I'll see you in a mo. Welcome back, and I hope you enjoyed our musical interlude. Other 30 second songs that no one listens to come courtesy of the Millses. And Juju and Millsy are breaking off a bit of stale new for Juju's mum, Roz. And having told her that baby number nine is on the way. Nine kids? Nobody has nine kids these days. Oh, I love a good quiz. Uh, Eddie Murphy, Hugh Grant, Peter D. And what were the reasons behind her keeping this little secret? I didn't feel like dealing with the negativity. It is what it is. Yeah, she couldn't be bothered to handle the inevitable stress. Nice one. It's the negativity's fault, you know. Not terrible life choices. And the phrase, it is what it is, is just a cop-out when you've intentionally done something. It is what it is, is for when life deals you lemons and you're busy making lemonade. Not when you can't open your legs without popping out a baby. It's more like, it is what it is when I've done it. So there, not quite as bad as Mills's God's hand comment. The plan is to just leave it in God's hands. And just in case he didn't infuriate his mother-in-law with a God comment the first time, he decides to go back there. I just felt like, you know, maybe this was a sign from God. You know how I feel about God. I think I can get a handle on how you feel. God's there to sort out your problems and make critical life choices. So uh, God is supposed to make your mistakes for you? I thought the whole idea was that a God would show you unconditional love by allowing you to make bad decisions. Get diseases, do a war or two. And let's just, you know, for argument's sake, say that we all believe in a single God. Where does he get off thinking that an entity that creates bloody universes and, you know, just breathes life into everything and anything has an interest in what Millsy's doing with his penis? Third world poverty? Hold on a second. Millsy's about to get his noodle wet. Flooding, pestilence, plague. Hold on there, sir. Millsy's on the mount. Oh, sorry, I was just here expanding the universe, doing nature stuff. Not busy giving a crap about a couple who didn't learn their lesson the first five times. Yeah, sorry about that. I'll just put these galaxies down and start your stupid ass out. Why bring me into this? I was here just minding my own business. He says, you know how I feel about God. You know how I feel about God. And everyone starts talking about how fucking virtuous he is. And because all that God business didn't quite get the reaction the first time, he double downs and references his own reverence. And you know, Ross loves that. I left it in his hands and... Don't use that phrase with me. Don't you blaspheme in here. Don't you blaspheme in here. Yes, slap him with your meat stick. Oh, Jesus Christ. It is what it is. Bottom of the list is one last trip to see what legs Akimbo and Joey are up to. Well... Akimbo has got a narcotics test for Joey to prove one way or another that he's being a naughty boy. I'm prepared for the answers I want to hear. I'm not sure I'm prepared for the ones I might get. Hmm, surprisingly profound coming from Akimbo. So Joey willingly takes himself off to the toilet to perform his little duty in his little cup. Will he be clean? Will he be dirty? Ooh, drum roll. You're showing up dirty. Kill surprise! He failed! Good job, Joey! And of course, it's the old excuses. How is that? There's no way. Which is similar to when you get caught with contraband as a kid. You know when you used to use excuses like, I was holding it for a friend. Maybe Joey was holding it for a friend too. But no, Joey just says, I really can't believe it. Then I have a theory on this, but I'll get to that in a second. What is it that he failed on? Well, the reading was COC which is code for that white stuff that's popular at parties. And no, I'm not talking about Justin Bieber, but I'm talking about that stuff that makes you do this. <laughs> which is either a bad cold or poorly cut bugle. Case closed, right? Joey's back on the gear and we're not talking about his crappy milfmobile. Maybe. Well, Detective Akimbo has noticed some inconsistencies in the investigation. If he's doing cocaine, like, he should be up. He should have energy. Now I've read the court of public opinion. Concluding that Joey has fallen off this Winnebago again. But what if I say decongestant? Now, we know Joey isn't the greatest actor, and his performance of It Wasn't Me was questionable. But what about this bit? By the way, that is. Yes. And what's decongestion's got to do with it? Well, decongestant, as in the stuff Joey's probably taking for that headache and flu symptoms he's got, hence the. <laughs> is well known for giving false positive results, specifically urine tests. So you know what? I'm going to stick my neck out and say that Joey is something like COVID, not withdrawals or a crazy habit. He's sick, he went to urgent care, got a prescription with the cash he withdrew because he thought he might get to keep the change for some Harry Bows on the way home, and is currently pretty damn ill, and everyone's busy telling him he's a drug addict. Good job. Looks like I picked the wrong week to quit amphetamines. 
Well, those are my thoughts. What about yours? Will Joey be forgiven? Will Coraline's friend convince Juan and Dan to leave her? You're telling me cut the cord sooner than later. Yeah. Who will be the father of Akimbo's baby? The DNA test is back. That will it all go south when Rob's family rock up to fuck up another set of dining furniture? Find out in the next thrilling episode. Right, that's it from Life After Lockup today. Time for a quick word from Lord Cat of Williamsington. Best compliment you ever got. You're good enough. Worst piece of advice you ever got. Don't ever change. Guilty pleasure. The silence and, and the love of a good woman. Thank you so much for joining us today. And if you like what I do, then you can join me weekdays for Coffee at the Manor, the bestest way to startest your day. And please do like and share the video or check out one of these little beauties. So until we meet again, stay beautiful, love to my three, and you take care of yourself. You're good enough.